Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. It's Friday, and we have a lot of stories of hope coming your way to support you to stay on track to reach your highest potential in this life. Uh, our first guest today is Christine Linscombe, and she is a wife and mother, a registered nurse, and a licensed financial professional. She enjoys helping and educating people on health and finances because that is her passion. Welcome to the show today, Christine. Hi, good morning, everyone. I just want to say thank you so much for having me here today. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. So good to have you. I just want to say, I mean, your uh, resume is quite uh you know, I mean, amazing with the fact that you're a mother, that you are a health and financial, that you love helping people with their health and, and finances. And that, you know, because just being a mother alone is a big job. How old is your child? I have two, three and seven years old. <laughs> Three and seven. So that's that's amazing right there. You're a registered nurse. So how long were you a registered nurse before you became a mother? So um, I have been a registered nurse for eight years now. Um, and before I became a mother, I was a registered nurse for two years. Two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this is wonderful that you, it just, you know, your resume, what it shows to me is that you are, you know, a, a mothering, nurturing presence to, you know, giving birth to your children. And it's important to also bring the financial aspect into it as well, and to be uh, healthy and wealthy in our financial foundation. Yes. Yes. So that's, that's, I admire that. Thank you. Thank you. I would say um, outside of my inspirational story, just working in the hospital, um, we see many patients that come in, um, some may be needing some emergency surgeries, procedures being done. And so there are some people that have um, insurance, health insurance, and some don't. And so uh, sometimes medical care that is needed is sometimes delayed because either insurance isn't covering it or they're covering a portion and the family has to figure out um, where the finances will come from um, unless there is just an emergency procedure surgery that needs to be done. Um, that surgery would just be um, just a surgery to keep that patient alive until they could figure out, you know, like the next intervention. And so that's kind of what pushed me into learning more about um, life insurance and other finances, because there is so many other things out there that can help in these situations. So that's pretty much what brought me to that, to that profession as well. Right. I mean, you know, a lot of people are probably even many people in your profession as a nurse would probably see that also, but it really, uh, it takes you because you had to learn things. You had to take steps in order to get yourself educated and find those resources and learn things. So it, it takes, you know, good on you for, for getting that um, education and becoming a licensed professional in that way as well. Um, you have a story. Yes. yes I I do. Story. So what's your story? I'm curious. <laughs> so I am actually um, from the Caribbean. My parents brought me here. We moved here at a very young age. And so from that young age, um, I have always known that I wanted to be a nurse. And so um, I really studied very hard. 
um, push through and um, just to pursue that dream. So after graduating high school, I jumped straight into college to pursue my dream. Um, and a few days before starting nursing school, I realized that life had different plans for me. Um, my parents left overseas. Um, they thought that it'll be a quick trip um, just for two weeks. So they left me here in the States um, with my younger siblings at the time. Um, and so things changed. My life was literally flipped upside down whenever I found out that my parents were not returning. They were not able to return back. Um, and so I was just left with this enormous task of managing both nursing school and taking care of my siblings. I went from being a big sister to taking on the full-time roles of mom and dad <laughs> um, overnight. I had so many thoughts of doubts and fears. It was a tough adjustment for all of us, especially my younger siblings who were missing our parents. Just imagine a 10-year-old not easily adjusting to the idea of their parents not coming back. And I had to kind of figure out, you know, just how to how to deal with my siblings feeling that way. Um, so despite these overwhelming challenges, I kept pushing forward. I had no choice. I could either let my circumstances be an excuse to drop out of nursing school or just show up every day and try my best just to balance it all. My days were packed with classes from Monday to Thursday, um, work study at the library in the evenings. Um, thankfully, my home was already paid off, so I just had to worry about just regular bills, utility bills, and so forth. Um, there was times I even had to sell my dad's car so that I can pay for our um, property taxes for the upcoming year. There were moments when things just seemed impossible, like the time I was rushing to school for an exam that morning, not realizing my car was on E. Huh. And so I remember driving down the street and my um, I wasn't too far from home and I felt my car just like jerking. And I was like, oh no, Look, I instantly pulled over. And um, as soon as I pulled over, the car shut down. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Um, and I'm telling you by the grace of God, I looked up and it shut down in front of a gas station of all things, of all buildings, a gas station. I was just like, wow, look at God. <laughs> so I, I didn't have much of a support system. I don't, I didn't have any family nearby. I just had a neighbor. Um, her name is Mrs. Tina. I called her. I'm like, Miss Tina, like, I need help. My car just shut down right now. I don't even have the money. I don't get paid yet from school. Um, can you just come and help me with putting gas in the car? So she was like two minutes down the street. So she came, she helped me with putting gas in the car and I was on my way to school so I could take my exam. Um, I'm so thankful for her. She was a lifesaver during that time of my life. Um, so um, I have faced many setbacks, one being I failed my clinicals class by one point. Nursing school is very, very tough. Um, so I failed it by one point, And um, because of that, I had to start the program back over again. Oh. Um, I explained to them, my advisor, you know, what was going on? And he was like, wow, why didn't you tell us? Um, I was like, well, you know, I'm just trying to just get through it. Um, but the rules are the rules. And so I just had to start the program back over. Um, I had people just doubting my belief and doubting my ability to be able to just handle the situation on my own with my sibling. Cause I was young, I was just 20, um, just doing it all on my own. I've always been with my parents. Um, they've always handled everything. And so I just had to figure it all out and just deal with people just Someone literally told me, like, I don't see you managing all of this on your own. Um, and other people would say, um, your parents isn't coming back. I had to just, I just never lost hope. I just never lost hope. Um, I never let their doubt deter me from my faith and belief that God can move mountains. Um, and my parents will return. I refuse to let their negativity get to me. I held on to my faith, trusting that things would work out. When my, fan, when my final semester rolled around, I was denied financial aid. <laughs> I hit another obstacle. 
but I did not give up. I applied for scholarships. I shared with my teachers what was going on and a miracle happened. I received a grant that covered all of those finances for me to finish my last semester of nursing school. Um, through every trial, it became clear to me that God was guiding my journey. Um, so my mom actually ended up returning a few weeks before I graduated nursing school. She was there to witness my pinning ceremony. Um, she was actually gone for a whole year and a half. <laughs> wow. And then my dad followed a couple months after. Um, and we were all home together again. Um, and our reunion was a powerful reminder of our resilience and faith in God. So to anyone listening, here's my message. Never give up. Life will test you and people may doubt you, but hold on to your dreams and have faith in your journey. Even when the road is tough, perseverance and faith will light your way. Keep moving forward and you'll find the strength to overcome any challenge. Uh, what a beautiful story. I mean, there's a lot in there. I could talk to you further for longer periods of time. Maybe we can have you come back on the show. I want to thank you so much for this inspiration of hope. I I just saw a tremendous amount of vulnerability through, uh, you know, the perseverance that you were facing, even though you didn't know how, but you were being led. And then the angels and the support was all around you and the miracles uh, supported you. God's, God's light supported you. Um, at the last minute of every turn. And it is just beautiful the way that the way you told the story too. I want to let the audience know how they can look you up on social media. Yeah. Yeah. So they can follow me on Instagram, um, underscore lovely Chrissy. And then they could find me on Facebook under Chrissy licensed financial professional. So I just want to say I'm really proud of you, Christine. I think it's wonderful what you're doing. And hands down, since you already had so much experience with uh, helping your siblings, that I know that you are an absolutely extraordinary mother and leader in uh, in what it looks like when we're being led and supported with following our dreams. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Everyone will be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Our next guest today is Tess Bradner. She's 33 years old and she lives in Belfast, Northern Ireland. It's eight o'clock over there right now, something like that. She has a degree in graphic design and PGCE qualification in teaching learners with additional needs. She decided that she would set up a business that combines both love of techie stuff and also supporting those with a disability in developing useful skills within this field. Her business idea is aimed to help anyone with a disability or the older generation with technology, ICT, touch typing skills. Welcome to the show today, Tess. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you. When we were talking in the green room before we came live, I was, you know, I love uh, what you said. What you were talking about is that you want to support and be of help because you just started this business. It's in the um, beginning stages and that you want to help and you want to support people either with disabilities or people that are from the older generation that are not good with the technology things, but that you want to build that bridge and you want to empower them and help them so that they can um, be part of it. Definitely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Um, one thing I'd like to say, um, I've got a, a visual impairment, um, but I don't let that be a negative. I let that be a positive. And I want to help uh, other people who, because I um, understand the barriers um, to learning, having had my own barriers in life, I'd like to uh, support um, anyone else with a disability, older generation, break down barriers um, to learning. Um, I know that uh, the world today is um, a techie kind of world. Um, so I'd like to kind of support anyone who needs support with um, technology, just um, help them kind of learn and develop skills 
in a welcoming environment um, and make them feel comfortable in asking questions um, and just learn and grow. It's so important because, you know, uh, with the technology, like, for instance, you know, when I speak to my mother, who is um, 85 years old, and, uh, you know, for years, I had been online doing my work online, and she would just go out there and go to the store and buy whatever it is she needs or whatever. Now she comes to me for, can you order this for me? Can you, uh, you know, get this for me? Can you do this for me? She comes to me now because... Um, it, it's just not something that she has learned how to do, right? And I yeah. just see that there is a big need out there for the older generation to, um, you know, have a bridge to feel part yeah. of this whole, this technology thing. Now, do you yeah. feel, um, how, how do you think you want to do that? Is that, is that going to be done on Zoom calls? Or how how is that going to be? How are you going to be doing that? Well, I do have a, um, for now, initial stages, I've got uh, a social media platforms. Um, so I know, I understand the older generation might, mightn't be able to access social media, but as a case of uh, word of mouth, mouth, maybe their sons or daughters um, may have, you know, social media and they can kind of pass, they can kind of mention it um, to their mum or dad. Um, so at the moment, I've got uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn and Instagram. I've also got um, for the people here in Belfast, Northern Ireland, I've got uh, flyers, uh, business cards. Um, but for those, uh, you know, anywhere else in the world, um, I, I can kind of it would need to be over like Zoom, Teams. Um, I also, I've actually got WhatsApp. So that's another way of uh, communicating through WhatsApp. Yeah. So let's tell the audience right now, the people that are listening, that uh, even people that want to support you, I think it's a wonderful, uh, you know, idea and business to have available to support the older generation, because you have to have the patience, mm -hmm. even. Yep. And I like what you said to create a, um, a learning environment, a safe environment, mm -hmm. environment. Yep. That's really, really important. Let's tell yep. the audience where you are. What's the name of your social media handles? Yep. Um, it's called uh, tutor Tutoring with Tess. That's how my, that's my, that? uh, how do you spell that? Nice and simple. Tutoring, T-U-T-O-R-I-N-G space W-I-T-H space T-E-S-S. -S. Okay. Okay. Yeah, tutoring with uh, tutoring with Tess. Yep. Right, right. So that's wonderful that you are um, coming into this. And so uh, have you already had success? Any success with helping people uh, get started? Um, as I mentioned before, it is at the initial stages, but I have had a, I have had experience helping people with technology in the past, and I've really enjoyed you know doing so, and they have really benefited as well. I'd like to mention that my PGCE, so my teaching qualification, that was teaching learners with additional needs. So I do have experience um, teaching other teaching people who need. Um, uh, extra support with things and helping them break down barriers um so yeah i've got extensive um experience and i really enjoy it really love supporting people it's yeah. my passion in fact <laughs> yeah i think that's a beautiful that's a beautiful gift i mean because it takes a special it takes a special person to be able to uh you know make themselves available to help yes. people you know, in a calm way, because, you know, yes. when you're learning new things, it's very intimidating. And especially uh, yes. the online techie world is very intimidating if you yes. don't know how to, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, but as you mentioned before about patience, I uh, I definitely offer that. I I've I've got a lot a lot of patience because as I mentioned um before as well, um I understand the barriers. Um, that you know things can be tough to learn. So I I I have loads of patience, and you know I can help um every learner that I'm you know, supporting um take you know, the smallest steps, however steps they need, however many steps they need in order to like reach their goal and succeed. Yes. That's my aim. 
That's really beautiful. Now, um, do you have a list of things on your social media possibly that is where it's listed, the things that you can help with? Like for instance, yep. you know, um, you know, I don't know what, what, what would be the techie things? Do you have like a list of things that you, that you are helping with? Yep. Uh, it's multiple things. Um, you, you mentioned some before, uh, touch typing, um, Microsoft office, um, mobile phones, iPads, um, um, other technology stuff, even, even teams and, you know, zoom, WhatsApp, <laughs> even, you know, um, anything, anything techie, uh, how to use laptops, uh, computers. Yeah, that's that's so important, you know, how to do that and to have a, to be a helping hand. Because, you know, I find that uh, when, you know, when you're having to learn this stuff by yourself, especially when you're older, it's yeah. so nice when you have somebody there that can show you it's okay and can hold your hand and can Definitely. Walk, you, walk you through it. And so do you have like uh, sessions available for people or do you have packages available for people or how do you do that? Well, um, I would actually like to kind of have an initial talk with whoever is interested in this in my um, services. And um, I'd like to have that initial talk with them first, just to see what exactly they need support with. So then I can create like a plan with them. And then I work around them, whatever suits them best, or, um, ours, uh, ours included. So if they're available, you know, say it's uh, uh, 9am or something, then I would kind of, you know, I would work around them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Tess, let's give uh let's give the audience your uh information again on social media where they can look you up. Great, thank you. No, go ahead. You could if oh, you sorry. Could the handle. Sorry, I thought you were going to say it yourself. Sorry, apologies. Um, so yes, I've got Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and it's tutoring with Tess, T U uh, T O R I N G space. W-I-T-H space T-E-S-S. -S. Great. Yeah, that's great. Tess, why don't you and I also become, um, you know, LinkedIn friends as well and also the Facebook because I love that, that you yeah. know, when I come across, I come across a lot of people and I'm also right now doing uh, some work with the older generation as well. So there's going to oh, be people brilliant. that I'm, I'm meeting that are... Um, that I can refer to you as well. I just want to oh, thank you so much for the work that you're doing. And thank you for coming on the show today and giving us this inspiration. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity um, you're to, yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're going to take a break now on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Everyone will be right back. Welcome back to the Cornelia Stephanie show, everyone. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. Don Donnelly is our next guest. He is a devoted husband, father, and advocate. With over 20 years in the medical device industry, his career has focused on innovations to ease chronic pain. However, his journey as a father inspired his first book. I'm going to let, us, let him tell us that story. Welcome to the show today, Don Donnelly. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. It's wonderful to have you. So you have an incredible story to tell because even before we came live today, you said that you want to spend the remainder of your life here on earth doing what it is that you are doing now. But 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 there is a story that happened before then. And that's what we, we want to find out about. Yeah. So oddly enough, this story kind of starts with something as boring as strep throat. And when somebody gets strep throat, it, it's it's not like a virus. If it's true strep throat, it's an infection. And just like everybody else, the body has a natural infection. Um, the white blood cells uh, kind of activate and they go to fight the infection and then move it on. Um, for some people, however, once that infection is gone, the white blood cells don't know what to do next. They actually go after healthy cells. And as a result, you get brain inflammation, which can lead to neuropsychiatric syndrome. And unfortunately, that's kind of how we were introduced into the world of pandas. 
is pediatric autoimmune neuropsych neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infection. Okay. And then what happened? So 2020, everybody kind of had a, a bad year there, but um, right before all of COVID started, um, our nine-year-old at the time had their first uh, real sickness and it ended up being strep throat. Um, same thing happened. He just kind of wrote it out for five to seven days um, and everything seemed to be fine after that. Uh, about a week after that, that's when we started to notice certain symptoms of OCD. Um, they were simple. They kind of had to do with contamination, so he couldn't get clean enough, um, kind of standard OCD stuff. Um, but defiance really started to become an issue. Thing as easy as, hey, come to dinner, and it would be just a loud no. Um, we started to hear curse words, which we hadn't heard before. Um, so we started to see specialists. Um, eventually, we ended up seeing 13 of them. But through the weeks, everything got worse and worse. The defiance turned to rage. The OCD turned to hoarding. So he would sneak out in the middle of the night and he couldn't get enough food. And it would be to the point where he would eat just to make himself sick and then continue to eat. To the point where we had to lock up all the food. Um, delusions, where he started, uh, at one point he had asked my wife if I felt guilty about uh, my grandmother dying because of a fire I had set which I don't even know where he could come up with this story. And he really got defensive when I even brought it up saying, hey, buddy, where are you getting this story? Um, and it all just kept getting worse and worse and worse. He was diagnosed with all the uh, different psychiatric, so um, schizophrenia, uh, multiple personality disorder. I mean, he really went down the gamut with every one of these specialists. But it just didn't make sense why it all of a sudden turned on. And luckily it was my wife who's brilliant and I'm lucky to have her. Um, she became that thing that most physicians um, don't like and that's she became a Google parent. And she started to research and she looked at clinical studies, found the Neuroimmune uh, Foundation, which looks at uh, autoimmune disorders for everybody, adults and children. And from there it went to a support group on Facebook called Panda's Parents. And what we found on there was Number one, there's a lot of people that have this. Number two, we weren't alone. And had we not have had that, honestly, I couldn't tell you where we'd be right now. It was to the point where we were afraid to take to sleep in our own house. Um, the police had been called multiple times, and he was only nine years old. Mm. Uh, but he was a different person. After that happened, we found the specialist. Once we were able to diagnose it, uh, turns out it's very treatable. Um, it's not easy, and there's a lot of steps you have to take, and insurance doesn't recognize it. Um, but he's back. He's a straight-A student. He's 14 now. He's got friends. He's smart. He's funny. Um, but there was two years of our lives that we honestly lost all hope of him. Oh, my God. This is, this is incredible. This story is incredible. I mean, uh, not only were you dealing with COVID, at that time, but also this at the same time. That's that's a lot to deal with. I'm glad to hear that your son is well and that you are, that he's doing well and that he's back to himself again. I personally had never heard of this pandas myself. I'd never heard of it. Um, or, you know, um, what happens to, I mean, something when you just have a simple kind of strep throat and then, um, the, the white blood cells don't know what to do after that is what you they said. They, yeah. So they go and fight the infection, which is what they're supposed to do. And once that infection has gone, they don't disengage and they oh. keep on looking for something to fight. And since there's no bad cells left anymore, they go after the healthy ones. Wow. Wow. So that was a two, two years of, of just, uh, terrible, uh, terrible experience for all of you. Right. Two years. It really was. Gosh. And, and it kind of led the 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 bottom or the rock bottom, as you say, was, you know, we were at a neighbor's house uh, during the Christmas season and it was two doors down. It's an easy walk. And we made the short sighted decision to leave him alone for about an hour. Sun was up. Um, he was in a good mood. He was on his computer and we had actually come home and uh, I couldn't open the door. And as I shoved the door open, there was glass everywhere. 
And as I scanned the room, um, everything, anything that was breakable was broken. There were knives on the wall. The TVs were broken. The fan was down. Um, it honestly looked like we walked upon a murder scene. And once I finally found him, um, I woke him up. He was asleep on the couch outside. And he just said he couldn't find something to eat. So that's when we went to the hospital. That's when kind of the, that's when my wife, wife really pressed the neurologist and all the pediatricians about pandas. And that's when we were able to get the treatment. Wow. Thank God for your wife uh, becoming, uh, you know, uh, her own uh, looking, her becoming her own authority. And then like, no, this, this can't be it. This can't be right. There's got to be, there's got to be something. And then starting to uh, find the resources and the right people to connect with. That's, that's amazing. You wrote a book. I did. It's called Navigating Pandas. Um, I really wrote it for a couple of reasons. Number one, we have to get the word out. Uh, pandas affects one in 200 kids. Um, and that's a lot considering you had just said you haven't heard of it. My pediatrician had never heard of it. Yeah. And that's kind of not acceptable. And he's a great pediatrician. It's just, there's not a lot of news about it out there. Um, the other challenge is I wanna make sure that people understand that there is hope, that there are success stories. And more importantly, there's people that can lead you in the right direction. That's what I that's what I truly choose to do with the rest of my life is making sure no one's in the um, in the place that we were two years ago. Yeah. So good for you for being in a different place. I mean, writing a book itself, you said something earlier that made me chuckle. You said you were not the type of person that could actually read a book. <laughs> is that what you said? Yeah, I said I was probably voted most likely to uh, to not read a book, let alone write one. But uh um, I had to get the word out. I felt it was therapeutic for me, but more importantly, we have to help other people going through this. And it's healing. It's healing because you've gone through such a horrendous experience. And then now you're writing about it. And then of course, you're also wanting to help others. Um, so it, it really serves so many things. It really helps so many things. Let's tell the audience how they can find out about your book, but also look you up on social media. Sure. I love it. So um, Navigating Pandas is my website. That's the easiest one. It can take you to the book. It can take you to my social media. Um, I'm Don Donnelly on social media, and I'm not afraid to friend everybody. Um, if you want to talk about pandas or if you know somebody, and what I'm finding since the book's been out is everybody knows somebody that they think is going through this. And my job's not to diagnose. My job's to get you the help you need, and you can go find out through a physician or a medical um, provider that uh, knows a little bit more about pandas. So it's interesting because as I'm hearing you talk right now, this is mainly what you're wanting to do. It's not even that you're looking at, um, you, yeah, you want to get the information out there, but you're not um, hiring. People aren't hiring you. You're here to help them. Is that what I hear you saying? Yes, this is a not-for-profit family. This is a we want to make sure um, the, the cash that we're putting in our mental bank is to help other parents and kids that are going through this terrible disease. That's what we yeah. want to be remembered as. Yeah, that's really amazing. Uh, so how how is your son today? What's his name? His name is, well, we're calling him Scotty just because uh, we've kept a pseudonym during that. But he's doing uh, fantastic. Uh, he's at chess club right now. Um, he's got friends. He's he's honestly just a different kid. Yeah. So that's, uh, this is such good news. And it's, it really, it does give a lot of inspiration of hope that even though sometimes we go through the most horrendous challenges as you have, as your family has, and uh, you guys found a way and made it through and now giving back. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful gift. It's a beautiful story. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. And may you also, you know, get your information out there to as many people as you possibly can. Well, I really appreciate you having me and helping me get the word out. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Everyone will be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Axa Wax? Yox. Yox. Dr. Axa Yox 
is here. She has a profound background in science, a master's degree in psychology, a specialty degree in biotechnology, PhD in microbiology with a focus on genetics. She won the first prize award, 12 inventions, and was nominated as a person of extraordinary ability. Dr. Axa uh, quit science to build her own company and she failed dramatically. Yet she follows her passion for helping people. She published a book and, and it's called Stop Calling It Comfort Zone, Be Uncomfortable to Be Comfortable to Succeed, where she describes an innovative technique about how to stop procrastination. I'm so glad you're here today because I don't know about you, but all of this expansion that's taking place in the evolution on this plane, uh, I'm finding myself uncomfortable more times than I can count. Can you imagine how uncomfortable it was for me being established scientist and just quit science and decide to go for my own journey and fail dramatically? But this is when the life changes. This is how it happens. Like it takes the turn and then you find your passion and you realize that, wow, okay, this is what the successful people tell all the time how you have to process to proceed whenever it's uncomfortable what is the comfort and then I started to realize that how we just fool our brain with the wrong words that we use and we are stuck because we just simply call it comfort zone you would never quit something if you keep telling that it's my comfort zone never because we are wired to stay safe we sabotage ourselves, our progress, simply because we use the wrong words. I love that. I love that. It's true. Why would you quit? Why would you want to quit the comfort zone? True. You and in, 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 in the comfort zone, you're already there. You're already comfortable. You've already been there for a long time. And but it is the growth. <laughs> long enough. <laughs> yeah. It's the growth that happens when you when you become uncomfortable right? And so the words, talk to us about the words. Talk to us about the words. Yeah, it's um, the same is if you want water and you try to convince yourself that, oh, at this moment, I maybe the piece of cake would be better for me. Your brain would be like, I need water. I'm thirsty. So you, whenever you change the meaning of the words, the brain doesn't work that way because we live our uh, life mostly in our subconscious. Otherwise, we cannot survive. And if you live in your subconscious and you keep telling, it's my comfort zone, the brain might think, okay, if this is uncomfort, if this is a comfort zone and I'm already unhappy, can you imagine how bad the uncomfort zone would be? And you will never quit. But once you realize that actually in the comfort zone, there is, a, there is no growth, there is no change. That's what my uh, technique was about. Once you flip and you realize that it's just only different appearance but the same things happens all over again this is when it flips because we live fulfilled life is like the new word which doesn't exist i know but i love to tell people because this is how they wake up it's like wait we're really full we fill our life with the fake um meaning and uh, we go for some activities, we do some social media is huge at the moment. But what I realized, this is something that I discovered, we have kind of the limit per emotion per day. Yeah. And when, when you fill your cup in the, in the evening, you are like, oh, I lived perfect day. And this is how we start the, the year with the same list of the desires or the wishes or the goals that we have and we end the year with the same list because we go through the day we fill our cup for the variety or sometimes you feel that oh I did something nice today uh, it's significant or there is a love there is connection so you don't realize that it's just only different appearance for the same things which are fake but you end up 
your day with the with the biochemistry which tells you i live nice day that's okay i'm fine but once you bring to nullify your biochemistry and you change what is the variety and what is the certainty for you you realize wait a minute what the hell i'm spending my life for there is no change it's just only different environment different place but i do all over the same again and again and this is how i realize that if you feel comfortable to be uncomfortable you will sabotage yourself because we are wired to feel safe but once you realize no 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 the comfort where i live it's uncomfortable I don't want to stay here because there is no growth. There is no progress. This is when you will change because you flip what you fake yourself that you succeed with the reality. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is, you can, <laughs> the audience can listen to this like three times and uh, replay this like three times to really get all the pieces of what you just said i mean it's it's brilliant uh, yeah because per day when you when especially when we have the negative emotions what is like at certain point you come and you are like it's enough i can't take it anymore so mm -hmm. that's uh, you filled your cup with the with the variety or whatever so you don't your biochemistry just uh, uh, screams at you i don't need any more just stop it that's why we go through the day we don't we don't find any progress but still you fooled your body with the biochemistry that i did so many different things while you did nothing which will help you to progress and when you flip that you raise the tolerance and you adapt to different biochemistry. So what is the base for my technique? If let's say, if you live in plus 100 and you go to minus 100, what will happen in one day without the equipment? You will slide right back to your comfort zone. You will search every possible way to be back to your comfort zone. But if you go step by step from plus 100, plus 99, plus 98, and you raise your tolerance to that particular environment, you already just climb the ladder and you raise the tolerance, like you adapt to that particular, uh, the, the conditions. And even if you go, let's say you reach plus 44 and you don't feel comfortable, you don't slide right back complete way you just slide one degree and you just keep climbing the ladder that's the difference you cannot go from being comfortable in your comfort zone to the growth zone and say i'm fine to feel uncomfortable no you have to feel uncomfortable to stay in your comfort zone you have to you have to rewire what do i associate with the comfort and what does the progress mean for you this is when things change. That's so great. I love that. So how do people respond to, you know, listening to this? You know, what what's your experience? How do people respond when they hear this? Do they um, do they do they want to walk towards it or say yes to it or do they pull back? And how do they respond? Nor. Uh, yeah, people. First of all, if you want to progress, you already would do something. So mostly my technique is for people who are perfect to sabotage themselves and to procrastinate. People don't want to listen because it's the first reaction is like, you are telling me to do something which I'm uncomfortable with. But once they realize, and the first, when they hear about the technique, they think like, that's weird, that's odd. But after one week, all of them, no exception, they call and they say, I would never, ever expect to feel what that what you were telling. It's absolutely 100% truth. I don't want to stay in my comfort zone because now staying there is uncomfortable. So it's not about, it's comfortable to feel uncomfortable. No, no, no. It's when you realize that your comfort zone staying there, it's uncomfortable. And this is when you will move. 
this because you just don't just stop calling comfort something which is uncomfortable it makes you unhappy it makes you unhealthy you are not fit you don't eat uh correct you you don't progress and we still keep uh calling it comfort zone so you give the like the command to your body i'm fine to be unhappy i'm fine to be unhealthy i'm fine to be uh unfit i'm fine with that it's my comfort that's the difference when you realize when you change your what you associate with the comfort no that's uncomfortable I want to tell the audience because we have to close the show. <laughs> it goes so fast. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Let's tell the audience really quick how they can look you up on social media and where to get your book. They can find the book on Amazon. And also I'm very active on LinkedIn. They can follow me and have more, yeah, better uh, content and hear better things. Not better, but more information because Absolutely. yeah, 15 minutes is very short. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Axe, for coming on. I appreciate that. Thanks for hosting me. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to the audience for listening and tuning into the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll see you again next week, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.